Okay, I wanted to talk uh, today about um, different grinds. And of course, there's a lot of uh, different videos uh, in regards to, to, this, to this subject. There's a lot of great information, and uh, like any other subject, there's a lot of misinformation out there. We're just going to, you know, sort of talk about, uh, you know, briefly talk about them. And there's variations of everything. So the first one I want to talk about, because I see the biggest misconception of this, is the um, saber grind. Now the saber grind is no more than this right here. If we're looking at the knife. All right, this is the spine. We come down. In this instance here, I drew it as a flat grind. And then we have our actual bevel right here. All right, and that can be convex. So when people talk about convexing a flat grind, they're talking about that. They're talking about making this, convexing this. Because you can't convex this unless you lose a lot of the stock thickness. You can't make this into a convex grind. All you can do is turn this bevel. You can, you can convex this. And that's what I talk about when I talk about flattening the shoulders of the blade, is knocking that down. So this is a saber grind. And people talk a lot about the saber grind, and it is one of the uh, most durable grinds because you have this stock thickness here. So uh, if we were to look at a knife um, on end like this, down here, forgive my, my, my artistry, we'll just do this right here. Draw our handle, and we'll go. Sort of looks a little bit like a buck 119, and then we have our fuller right here. So with these uh, saber grinds, a lot of times we sort of have this right here. It has that look, and it, so it's stock thickness. This here is all stock thickness, and this here is where the grind begins. And in this instance, our grind is the uh, flat grind. So, <clears throat> with the uh, with the with the saber grind, as I said, we uh, we have tremendous strength. And now, the more strength that you want, the lower we take the stock thickness. So you may have what someone might call a high saber grind. Then we come down. All right. You may have an even lower saber grind. All right. And we go. <clears throat> so as you can see, this is starting to look like a Scandi grind. And that's basically what a Scandinavian ground knife is, is it's a little, very low saber grind that's flat, with, with the flat bevel. Of course, this can be uh, convex, or you can, I mean, you can make whatever you want. concave or hollow ground. <clears throat> so <clears throat> whatever you're doing, okay, uh, in the woods, you should obviously have a knife that uh, greatly assists you in whatever it is that, that you're doing. So if you're looking at something for maybe more of a, a slicing or maybe more of a food prep knife, something like that, you're probably going to want this this higher grind uh, right here, all right. And maybe you would uh, be able to do some kindling and little things like that. And having this portion still maintain the, the stock thickness would be advantageous for that. Uh, and then we have this really really nice long 
uh, you know, bevel. So we can, we can get good slicing. This here would maybe be a little bit more like your, um, this is going to do a little bit of everything for you, okay? <clears throat> uh, this might be something like the, uh, uh, the Bravo. Uh, well, the Bravo is in convex, but, but that's what we would talk about, okay? The Bravo um, and numerous other knives. The uh, SRK. And the, the advantage of this is while it sort of takes away some of our sliceability with having this lower grind, we add a little more strength to the blade by having this much stock thickness. So if you do more food prep, or I'm sorry, if you do more um, wood processing, i.e. splitting kindling or shelter poles, things like that, this may help you out even more. And of course when we talk about this here, um, this being a flat grind, we know what this does well and it shaves wood and splits wood because you don't have to go in very far into the wood before you start to reach this stock thickness and open that up. The problem with this is, is if you have the same stock thickness as these, you're going to be at a disadvantage for anything slicing. So personally, on a Scandinavian ground knife, I really don't want anything over an eighth of an inch when we're talking about a, a grind that low. Preferably, I want it below, uh, below that with 330 seconds on something like this right here. Because if you get an eighth of an inch or, or higher, as anyone knows, you can't even cut carrots or potatoes without food blowing off the uh, tabletop or the, uh, the cutting board. This here, of course, we can get even more. Uh, you know, we, we can start reaching quarter inch territory. Um, and as I said, this here being the sort of the, um, the, the, the higher one, we're going to get more slicing and things out of this, but we still have a real good stock thickness up there to work with. Um, and as I said, we're talking about saber grinds. And for here, I use the flat grind uh, in, in this demonstration to, to show that. Uh, I would say maybe, um, you know, you've got the K-Bar BK2 might be sort of a hybrid of, of this. Where we've, we've got a, a sturdy uh, saber grind, but um, we've, got a, we've got a 20 degree bevel right here. So it still has some sliceability. The, um, uh, the BK9, we have even, even higher. And the BK2 being a quarter inch, the BK9 is the uh, uh, 3 16 So you're, you're going to gain different things depending. You know, here obviously we have a tank of a knife, the, 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 the BK2, right? Here we have the BK9, still a tank of a knife. <clears throat> but you know, as you see, we, we, we have a, a thinner stock up top. We have a wider blade profile, so we can continue this nice slope. So we have a knife that slices well too, and it still splits wood. So it can give you a real good idea on how much steel is too much steel, really, right? Because 316s, we've got a heavy knife that we can do about anything conceivable. And here we got a short knife that's even thicker. Once again, you got to sort of pick pick your poison, right? What what do you want to do with the knife? Now, staying with the saber grind, as we said, we have the hollow, we have the convex. We have the flat, and I'm going to come back over here for this, and we have the Scandinavian ground knife, right? And I'll just notate that.
So these are all saber grinds. And um, they usually do a lot of things quite well. Once again, it all depends on the stock thickness. As I've stated before, um, geometry determines the functionality of the heat treatment of the steel. Always geometry is going to work first, right? I could take a piece of paper and cut your finger. But I could take a ball of the best steel in the world and I'll never be able to cut you with it. It's always about geometry. Pick which one you want and, uh, and, and go with it. Well, thank you very much. Uh, we'll have more videos where I do discuss uh, some different grinds and we'll get into them like this. And, um, you know, there's plenty of examples out there to, to look at, but I hope that this clarifies some things up for some people out there. Thank you very much for watching. Take care.